The Catholic Medical Association says it is deeply concerned with the FDA's decision to approve the first over-the-counter hormonal contraceptive pill called the O pill. Dr. Kathleen Ravelli, an OBGYN who is on CMA's board of directors, said, quote, this shows a total lack of regard for a woman's health to offer a hormonal contraceptive available over-the-counter without medical supervision. These women deserve authentic medical care. And joining us now to discuss this and more is Dr. Lauren Rubal of the Catholic Medical Association. She is a specialist in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. Dr. Rubal, welcome back. So great to have you on the show again. Um, as we know, the Catholic Church is very clear that it's morally evil to use contraception to prevent a human life. Um, but can you explain the medical concerns uh, with this birth control, especially as it can be dispensed without a prescription and apparently with no age restrictions? Yes, thank you for having me, but absolutely, I think that there is significant medical concern as well. This is the first FDA-approved over-the-counter contraceptive method, and the way that they were able to um, somewhat speed up this approval in some ways is because it's comprised only of progesterone. It's a synthetic progesterone, different than our body's normal progesterone. However, this is what makes it known as the mini pill. It's not the classic birth control that's comprised of both a synthetic estrogen and progesterone together. Um, with that being said, because of this, there isn't as much of the same risks of um, clotting in the blood vessels that the regular birth control with the combined estrogen progesterone may have. However, there are still significant risks. Um, and so I would say that both side effects and risks alone make it an issue that we want to see patients for and appropriately counsel them. The most common one that I would say is that Believe it or not, up to half of all women on this mini pill can have a longer bleeding duration and up to 7% of women can have breakthrough bleeding. And so a woman may be taking this and note that her periods and her bleeding pattern are completely go awry. That's one very common one. But I think that other ones that are very concerning to us, there still is an increased risk of cancers, even with progesterone-only contraception. And this includes breast cancer, up to 30% increased risk in a recent UK study showed that this was present or associated with this, potentially even types of brain cancers and cervical cancer. So very concerning, um, again, and, and people are, may not be getting appropriate care and just taking this over the counter. Yeah, and what about those women who maybe have underlying medical conditions? I mean, is this especially dangerous for them? Absolutely. And so another risk that we think of is if anyone has underlying liver issues, we do know that these contraceptives may still impact the liver. And this also um, highlights women who have mood symptoms. So, so many women, even up to a quarter of women prior to um, this decade reported depression in some way, shape or form. We do think that this is involved and related to hormones. And we know based on very large scale studies that um, these artificial and synthetic hormones can significantly increase these risks of depression. And this effect is most pronounced in our teens. And here we are providing this over the counter access to, to really anyone, including teenagers who may use it. And we also know that this risk and finding of mood changes may persist even after a woman stops using this contraception. So I think very concerning. Yeah. Um, another issue that may be a factor for people with underlying conditions is that we know that uh, this type of contraception may also increase blood pressure. And there is a suggestion that it may be associated potentially with lowering certain vitamins and minerals, which again, essential for so many of our different body processes. Dr. Rubal, um, we are almost out of time, but quickly, I, I want to get you to weigh in on something here, um, how some doctors plan to use AI technology to assist with IVF, IVF, that is success, in particular with embryo selection. Uh, really quickly, uh, we know what the church teaches on this, uh, but can you tell us the dangers on this as well? Well, I would say that, uh, first of all, just jumping into a new technology again without a significant amount of data behind it is always concerning. Um, what it does is it uses AI to look at the embryo and follow time lapse as that embryo develops and grows. And so they so help select which embryo to transfer back into a patient. But I found what was very interesting was this quote on their website, which said that it, quote, has the power to perform an initial triage of embryos that are not viable, helping to decrease the need for 
freezing and storage. And so this technology is going to be involved in determining which embryos are being destroyed. And so again, I think there's a lot of concern here, but in particular, that really stuck out to me. We have to leave so. it right there, unfortunately. Dr. Ribal, great to have you on again and look forward to you coming back. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. God bless.